Toyota is completely revamping how they build vehicles. Today, we're going to talk about their restructuring as a company in order to build vehicles faster, in order to build them more efficiently, to reduce costs, and to have some of the best vehicles and tech leading vehicles out there on the market before we know it. Let's get into it. Human-centered monosecurity evolution combines Toyota's unique strengths with innovative technology and digital tools to transform car manufacturing and the future of cars. This combined approach is designed to deliver a 50% reduction in equipment investment, a 50% reduction in production preparation lead time. So if it takes six years to design a car and from, from beginning a preparation stage to it hitting the road, now it's going to take three years. That's a huge improvement. Um, and a 20% increase in pro productivity, that is excellent to see as well. Further steps taken toward mass production, next generation battery technologies too. So we're going to get into a lot of this today. And yes, there's a human-centered approach to manufacturing, which Toyota starts with because they believe that is the foundation, uh, which I don't disagree with. But to me, it's not that exciting. I am more excited on their new technology that they're implementing uh, that's not as human based, but I will put that in here after I go over the more tantalizing details. So let's start with number three, and then we'll do one and two later. But number three is innovative technology for the future of car manufacturing. This is absolutely huge to change the world's biggest automaker into the leading technology wise. Are they going to like leapfrog Tesla here? I think in some ways they're absolutely, in other ways, no, because Tesla is still this evolving thing as well. But I think Toyota is going to do it their own way, which is very unique and very Toyota of them. All right, so let's get into it. All these te technologies are being implemented to improve efficiency and productivity and improving efficiency, increasing productivity and shortening lead times are what Toyota production system does best. And Toyota is identifying and implementing quick wins to optimize the mass production of next generation battery electric vehicles. Quick timeout, next generation battery electric vehicles. They want to sell 1.6 million battery electric vehicles by 2026. Last year, they sold like 24,000 total across the world. So these next generation, uh, these next gen techniques will be implemented for sure. And I think it's somewhere around 60% of the vehicles produced in 2026 will be implementing a lot of these technologies that we're talking about today. All right. So the goal is to have half the number of processes and plant investment with the new modular GigaCast technology and with the self-propelling production line. So let's get into GigaCast technology. Toyota's new innovative GigaCast technology features aluminum die casting, which eliminates many parts and processes. It is designed as a three-part modular structure, which then has the benefit of allowing manufacturing assembly work to be performed in an open environment. The three-part modular architecture also allows for greater variety in the types of vehicles to be designed and produced. GigaCast technology requires a periodic replacement of casting molds, which typically takes around 24 hours. However, Toyota has been able to significantly reduce the change over time by leveraging its know-how in engine manufacturing, including low-pressure molding and die casting. Tapping into this knowledge has allowed Toyota engineers to develop an optimally shaped mold that enables replacements in just 20 minutes. So you're going from 24 hours of replacement of a mold down to just 20 minutes. In addition, the use of proprietary analysis technology improves the quality of castings, thereby reducing the number of defective molds. And by employing this unique architecture alongside its approach to casting molds, Toyota is targeting a 20% improvement in productivity compared to current industry standards. That's not compared to Tesla. Tesla's a uh, above beyond and like leaving everyone else in the dust uh, in terms of the industry standards. But compared to where Toyota is right now, let's say Toyota is the industry standard, giga casting alone and how they're planning to implement it immediately like that improves 20% of productivity. Absolutely insane. Now, if we go over to Nikkei Asia, um, you know, Toyota invited a bunch of Japanese journalists over to to this announcement that I was reading from actually the Toyota Europe page, which I think did a better job explaining this technology compared to the Toyota Japan page. But anyways, Nikkei Asia here, they had journalists that were there and they have more details on this gigacasting technology. 
This giga casting machine is at the Miyochi plant and it releases a plume of white smoke as it ran during the recent demonstration for journalists. The molten aluminum that was poured in rapidly cooled from 700 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius, solidifying into a single die cast piece, making up the entire rear third of the vehicle chassis. This is normally built from 86 parts in a 33 step process that takes hours. Now it's done in a matter of minutes. They, they remind us that Toyota wants to sell three and a half million electric vehicles by 2030. Let's get to 2026 first when they plan to build 1.6 million. This giga casting technology will definitely be used in the new electric vehicle, vehicle platform due out in 2026. The first vehicle will be a Lexus and we will be getting from what I'm hearing a concept of this uh, flagship Lexus at the Tokyo Mobility Show, which I will be attending. I'll show you guys that car, give you guys my thoughts on it firsthand. Now, remember last year I talked about how Toyota tore down a Tesla Model Y and you know they're like, okay, well, we, we need to stamp the car into big pieces instead of small pieces like we currently do and then put them together, which takes forever and it's very costly. But Toyota started doing giga casting prototypes back in September of 2022. I first reported on it, I think it was in like January of 2023. So they've been working on it a lot longer than, the, than we thought. And it doesn't come as a surprise to me. But let's get into the next big technology outside of giga casting. And this is their self propelling production line. The self propelling line concept is already implemented on certain welding lines at the Motomachi plant. Quick time out the Motomachi plant builds the BZ4X, the Subaru Solterra. I believe the Crown models are built there. The Lexus LC is built there. The GR Yaris is built there. The GR Corolla is built there. And I'm probably missing something as well. So that gives you an idea of just the, the product um, versatility and variety that they have on the, this Motomachi plant. But anyways, this self-propelling line at the Motomachi plant forms the basis of future development and rollout of a new generation vehicle manufacturing. This new in-factory transport technology significantly improves the flexibility of line layouts and eliminates the need for conveyor belts, thereby drastically reducing plant investment and production preparation lead time. I mean, if also if they want to rework their plant, they don't they don't need to move that many things. Like conveyor belts would be extremely difficult, extremely costly to move around the plant. You've completely eliminated that because every single car has their own individual conveyor belt because they're just battery electric vehicles. And uh, there's telling like <clears throat> they have all these sensors around the factory and in the car that is telling them where to go. The self propelling semi assembled vehicles operate safely at a speed appropriate to mass production thanks to several factors. Their sensors are capable of recognizing vehicle, people, and objects, and all processes from equipment to development and mass production are insourced using the knowledge and experience that Toyota has accumulated through autonomous driving technology development. Let's get into batteries. They haven't changed a lot and haven't said a whole lot since their last huge battery announcement, which I believe was in March timeframe. But let's get into this. They are saying they're, again, aiming to commercialize its next generation liquid electrolyte battery in 2026 through 27. And this is based off of their lower cost lithium iron phosphate batteries as its core material. But it's a, it's a bipolar setup, which no one else is doing bipolar lithium iron phosphate. Um, so lithium iron phosphate, it's cheaper. It's typically safer than traditional lithium ion or NMC batteries. But if they're able to lasagna it like they have with their nickel metal hydrate batteries using bipolar technology, then it essentially makes it as viable and as good in terms of energy and range as the current lithium ion battery, but cheaper and safer as well. In order to do this bipolar setup and to minimize costs, it is essential that during the coating process, the paste must be applied to the metal foil evenly and in large quantities and at speed. Toyota is able to achieve this by leveraging its 26 years of coating knowledge coming from its production of fuel cell stacks and of batteries for hybrid electric vehicles. Furthermore, Toyota's first solid state battery is expected to be ready for commercial use in 2027 through 2028. That time frame has not changed at all since this spring. 
Um, the solid state battery has ions moving through a solid. Therefore, the anode, cathode, and solid electrolytic layer should be tightly bonded to each other without gaps. Toyota has actually established the process for stacking batteries at high speed and high precision without damage to different materials using the innovative mechanism and synchronous control technology. So they don't have a lot of images for their solid state battery production area. This is it. This little completely sealed off area here is where they make the solid state battery. All right, so that was all under innovative technologies of the future of car manufacturing. Let's go ahead and quickly get into the tools for future of car manufacturing. Toyota is using digital tools to shorten the lead times of equipment manufacturing and improve the productivity of existing facilities. To shorten the lead time of installing and commissioning new production facilities, digital 3D models are being used to identify unanticipated defects and difficulties in manufacturing equipment that might otherwise cause longer lead times involving redesigning and remanufacturing. Furthermore, using a digital twin halves the lead time for production preparation as potential defects in the process can be identified in advance, thereby enabling Toyota frontline workers to apply their knowledge and experience at the equipment design stage. Toyota is also using digital 3D models of its existing facilities to improve productivity with reduced lead times for implantation. This approach also has led to additional automated processes. And moving to the ever-evolving human-centered best practices for the future of car manufacturing, which Toyota believes is the most important thing here, uh, but is to me the least interesting, like I said. But let's get into it nevertheless. So good examples of relevant areas where human-centered best practices are being evolved for the future of car manufacturing include environment to share skills, ingenuity, and wisdom. Since its foundation, Toyota has encouraged its production line members to gather on the shop floor to share their skills, ingenuity, and wisdom to help create and mass produce new products. This process continues today and is further supported by the establishment of a startup studio where members can share learning to respond quickly to the challenge of new manufacturing processes and ideas that can be quickly materialized towards prototype development and mass production technology. Toyota employs many highly skilled manufacturing professionals called Takumi. Their delicate work realizes high quality product finishing at a level that robots cannot yet achieve. And since many Takumi skills are based on tactic, hands-on knowledge, passing them on to the next generation poses a big challenge. Toyota is using digital technology to visualize the practical skills of craftspeople in an easy to understand way for next generation and it has the potential to automate these skills in the future, which, I mean, here's the thing. Yes, we want to be able to pass these uh, skills on to people um, to keep Takumi alive. I don't think Takumi are going to go anywhere anytime soon. But what is going anywhere anytime soon is a population of Japan and most Asian countries. Well, I'm not going to say India. That continues to grow. But like uh, China, Korea. Japan, where they build a ton of uh, cars, their populations are starting to dwindle due to very low birth rates. And if you can find ways to perpetuate and sanctify the skills that the Takumi possess for not only the next generation to, to be able to pick up on, but also for robots to do their best to emulate, then you don't need as many workers in theory, or you're not as reliant on human beings. So they're like, okay, well, we need humans. We need these human skills. Let's gather them. Let's try to replicate them in a digital way so we can keep them forever. That's how I see it in a robotic-led future. It is very fascinating to me that Toyota is sharing so much of what they're working on to produce future vehicles. I don't know, like I could be wrong, but I don't ever remember since, I mean, I have been covering Toyota for that long. I don't believe I've seen anything like this from Toyota coming from their, their media, as well as their press rooms talking about how they are improving their production uh, technology, shaking things up, and also wanting to perpetualize their workers as best as possible through the use of technology. So it is very interesting and I don't see anyone maybe tesla but tesla doesn't really have any press press releases uh for the most part so i you know the only time tesla talks about it is maybe during their like investor days or battery days 
But here's Toyota doing it fairly regularly here uh, since the past year or so since they introduced this second generation uh, battery electric platform. Really, they're, they're spilling the beans on what they're working on. Maybe it's for investors. That could be it. But I think it's also to show the world that, hey, they're dumping a ton of money and uh, resources and uh, research and development into changing how they build cars for a more sustainable future. And uh, I think for them, it, it allows them to reduce costs. And, and long term anyways, um, they'll see a return on this investment pretty quickly, I think, um, uh, after implementing gig casting and all these other things that they're doing, like mobile assembly lines by self-propelled vehicles, which is pretty cool. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'm shutting it down there. I'll see you guys comment down below on your thoughts on Toyota's battery electric future. I know a lot of you want nothing to do with it, but Toyota is one of the few companies out there that is saying, hey, we believe in a multi-solution approach going forward. They don't ever plan on getting rid of internal combustion engines across the world unless they are forced to by legislation. Um, and that is, I mean, that could be a reality here in the United States, definitely during my lifetime. But unless you're in a carb state, like California, New York, I think Washington, et cetera. Internal combustion engines are not going to be on the docket for getting discontinued. Yes, emission regulations will continue to increase where you start to have plug-in hybrids almost as a default in the next 10 years. But until then, I don't see internal combustion going anywhere. And if the market speaks and the market doesn't want to buy electric vehicles, what can legislation do about that? That is something that is quite interesting. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. A little bit dry today, but it is very uh, insightful on what Toyota is doing behind the scenes. I can't wait for their bipolar nickel metal hydride battery technology to be implemented into lithium iron phosphate. And I can't wait for their solid state batteries to hopefully you know, break down the walls of the current limitations of range and affordability and design. So anyways, got to shut it down there. I got cars coming in today uh, for, for review this week will be uh, the new e-tron, QA e-tron. Can't wait to see all the improvements there. And I'm also getting a Kia Seltos Turbo to review. Thank you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day and peace.